Here we have the ear model. This part of the ear would be the external ear. Right? It acts like a funnel to funnel sound waves into the ear canal, which is right here. At the end of this ear canal, we've got this structure right here, which would be the tympanic membrane, or eardrum. And if I were to turn this right here, you'd be able to see what that eardrum looks like. The eardrum is going to transform sound waves into mechanical motions. And the eardrum will vibrate the malleus and incus and stapes, which are the ossicles, or the bones, inside the middle ear. So, malleus, incus, and stapes. All three of these bones are going to be connected by synovial joints. The tympanic membrane is over here, and when the tympanic membrane moves, it's going to move the malleus, it's going to move the incus, which is going to move the stapes, which is going to move the membrane on the oval window. These three things right here would be the semicircular ducts. And they're going to detect rotational movements of the head along with the ampulla down here. Okay. This would be the lateral semicircular duct. This would be the posterior semicircular duct. And this would be the medial semicircular duct. Inside the vestibule up here where the semicircular ducts attach, inside the vestibule we have two structures, one known as the utricle and the other known as the saccule. Both of those structures will be involved in detecting linear acceleration or acceleration along a straight line, or they would be responsible for detecting the head's position with regard to gravity. Okay. These semicircular ducts with the ampulla at their bases, they're going to be able to detect rotational movements of the head. Okay. This will be able to detect rotational movements if we were to say no. This would detect rotational movements if we were to nod our head yes. And this over here would detect rotational movements of the head if we were to lateral flex from side to side. Now this structure right here is the cochlea. And this structure back here is the vestibulocochlear nerve coming from the vestibule, which would be this part here, and the cochlea, which would be this snail-like structure here. Down here, we can see where the stapes was attached. The stapes has been broken off of this model, but the stapes would attach to the oval window here. The round window, which would be right here, would help to equalize pressure inside the inner ear so that when stapes pushes the oval window inward, pressure won't build up. Okay. The round window will push outward to help equalize that pressure. This model doesn't show the round window, but it would be there in humans. Another structure we can see is this structure right here. Okay, And then this would be attached to this structure. This is going to be the tensor tympani muscle. Tensor tympani muscle attaches to the malleus and when tensor tympani contracts, it will hold the malleus still, thus holding the tympanic membrane still, because the malleus is attached to the tympanic membrane, or eardrum. So when the eardrum gets held still, it's less likely for loud sounds to vibrate all of these structures and damage the inner ear. So the tensor tympani muscle is going to help to protect our receptors in our inner ear from damage. This structure right here is the auditory tube, otherwise known as the eustachian tube. Okay. What this structure is going to do is help to equalize pressure on either side of the eardrum. If we were to go up in elevation, like go up in an airplane or go up a big hill, the air pressure would drop out here but the air pressure inside the head would stay the same. So the air pressure in the middle ear here is going to be higher relative to the lower air pressure out here. So what's going to happen is this higher air pressure is going to push out on the tympanic membrane and tighten it. And it's not going to vibrate as well, so we're not going to hear as well. When pressure builds up in here, what's going to happen is this eustachian tube or auditory tube will open to allow this high pressure air out. And by the way, that's what happens when your ears pop. 
It allows this high pressure air out so that pressure is then equalized on either side of the eardrum. The eardrum is not tense anymore and it's going to vibrate better and you're going to be able to hear better. One of the ways to open this eustachian tube is to depress the mandible. It will pull on all this tissue down here opening the opening so that this high pressure air can come out. Ways to depress the mandible would be to yawn or to chew gum. If you found this video helpful, click like and consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to visit www.humanbodyhelp.com.